dear students to the massive open online course on money and financial markets. In today's module, we are going to deal with reforms in the Indian capital market. Now, when we talk about the Indian capital market and reforms, we find that reforms were initially initiated in 1991 as a part of the structural reforms comprising industrial deregulation, privatization, globalization, and the financial reforms through liberalization of domestic economic policies and the foreign exchange policies. But before going into the reform process, let us have a historical perspective of the whole view. After independence, the parliament had passed the Capital Issues Control Act of 1955. Between 1955 and 1992, issuers in India were required to obtain permission from the government regarding the timing and size of the issue and the price at which the securities were issued. As a result, the government would invariably ask issuers to issue the securities at a discounted price to the market clearing price just to be safe. Investors quickly recognized this and the primary issues were invariably oversubscribed. In 1956, the government also passed the Securities Contract Regulation Act, which is still in effect today. Despite the fact that this act gave the government the authority to regulate the stock markets, it was entirely up to the stock exchanges to discipline their members and the government rarely looked into the operations of the stock exchanges. India had a tightly controlled primary market and a largely unrestricted secondary market. Our markets grew slowly in this controlled environment. The government of India decided in 1992 that capital market regulation should be handled by a statutory authority, the SEBI or the Securities Exchange Board of India. So when we talk about the capital market reforms, the most important committee that comes to our mind is that of the Narasimham Committee of 1991. The, it, it starts off with the abolition of the controller of capital issues. The Capital Issues Control Act of 1947 governed capital issues in India. The capital issues control was administered by the controller of capital issues or the CCI. The Narasimham Committee of 1991 recommended the abolition of CCI and wanted SEBI to protect the investors and take over the regulatory function of the CCI. As a result, the government replaced the Capital Issues Control Act and abolished the post of CCI. Companies were allowed to approach the capital market without prior government permission subject to getting their offer document cleared by the SEBI. Simultaneously, the government of India repealed the Controller of Capital Issuance Act, giving the corporates greater leeway over the price, size and timing of their issues. Then, of course, the most important part that came about in the reforms was a free entry to the capital market. So in May 1992, the Capital Issues Control Act was abolished, as said before, and functions of the Capital Issues Controller were entrusted to SEBI. Any company was free to enter the capital market at any point of time to raise any amount of money they wanted at any price that they can justify to SEBI and the investors. Also, new instruments were launched uh, after 1992. Innovative financial instruments were introduced like convertible preference shares, secured premium notes, warrants, zero coupon bonds, deep discount bonds, discount bonds, flexible bonds, loyalty coupons, etc. So, certain points that are very important in the context of capital market reforms are, number one, of course, the establishment of SEBI, then setting up of private mutual funds, opening up to foreign capital, access to international capital markets, and banks and capital markets. Let us start off with the establishment of the SEBI. So, we have already said that the SEBI was set up in 1988 and was legalized in 1992. 
The primary function of CB has been to regulate the activities of the merchant banks, to control the operations of mutual funds, to work as a promoter of the stock exchange activities, and to act as a regulatory authority of new issue activities of the companies. The SEBI was set up with the fundamental objective that is to protect the interest of the investors in the securities market and for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto. The capital market in India has seen a large number of changes over the last few years, particularly after 1991, and SEBI continues to move towards more efficient market. All the measures that were introduced since July 1991 aims to improve the productivity and efficiency of the system. SEBI, as well as all the other agencies, they look for professional standards, functional strength backed by corporate right, ethical behavior, and a comprehensive and total approach to business from the part of the stockbrokers. All these measures will ultimately make the Indian industry competitive in the international market. The important regulatory measures that were introduced by SEBI were as follows. SEBI had introduced a code of advertisements for public issues by companies for making fair and truthful disclosures. The companies are now required to disclose all material facts and specific risk factors associated with their projects while making public issues. It has required the stock exchanges to amend their list listing agreements to ensure that a listed company furnishes annual statements to them showing variations between financial projections and project utilization of the funds made in the offer of the documents and in actual practice. This will enable the shareholders to make comparisons between the performance and also the promises that were made by the company. An important reform that SEBI has introduced is that it has brought the merchant banking also under its regulatory framework. The merchant bankers were required to follow the code of conduct that was issued by the SEBI in respect of the pricing and also the premium fixation of issues of the shares of the companies. The practice of making preferential allotment of shares at prices unrelated to the prevailing price has been stopped by CB. Besides to ensure transparency, insider trading has also been banned by the CB. And as a part of establishing transparent rules for trading in stock exchange, the notorious Badla system has also been totally banned and in its place, rolling settlement system has been introduced. So if I try to look at the various guidelines for capital issues in the primary market that SEBI had introduced, we can say that the companies were required to disclose all material facts and specific risk factors associated with their projects. The SEBI also introduced a code of advertisement for public issues for ensuring fair and truthful disclosures. SEBI has allowed the companies to determine the par value of shares that were issued by them. SEBI had allowed the issue of IPOs through the book building process. SEBI introduces regular regulations governing substantial acquisition of shares and takeovers and lays down conditions under which disclosures and mandatory public offers are to be made to the shareholders. Regulations further revised and were strengthened in 1996. SEBI reconstituted the government board of the stock exchange and introduced the capital adequacy norms for the broker accounts. Other regulations that were or other changes that were put forth by SEBI were the private mutual funds were permitted and several such funds were already set up. All mutual funds were allowed to apply for firm allotment in public issues, which was also aimed at reducing the issue cost. Regulations for mutual funds were revised in 1996. Over the counter exchange of India formed, national stock exchange were established, Bombay stock exchange introduced, screen based trading. 15 stock exchanges now have screen based trading. 
capital adequacy requirement for brokers were enforced systems of mark to market margins introduced in the stock exchanges stock lending scheme was introduced transparency was brought out in short selling national securities clearing corporation limited was set up by nse bsc in the process of implementing a trade guarantee scheme sebi strengthened the surveillance mechanism and directed all stock exchanges to have separate surveillance departments and sebi also strengthened the enforcement of its regulations they began the process of prosecuting companies for misstatements and ensuring refunds of application money in several issues on accounts of misstatements in the prospectus indian companies were permitted to access international capital markets through the euro issues foreign direct investments allowed in stock broking asset management companies merchant banking and other non banking finance companies foreign institutional investors allowed access to the indian capital markets on registration with the sebi after looking into the role and the important functions that sebi played in the reforms in the capital market let us look at some other ancillary things that did come up in the capital reforms like setting up of private mutual funds another important reform is the permission that was granted to the private sector firms to start the mutual funds many private sector companies such as tata reliance birla they had set up their mutual funds through which they were able to raise money from the public in this way monopoly position of uti in the mutual fund business had come to an end mutual funds raise money by selling units to the public and the funds so raised are invested in a number of equities and debentures of the companies a mutual fund may be entirely equity based or debt based or a balanced one having a particular combination of investment in equities and debentures of a number of companies investment in mutual funds enables the investors to reduce their risk mutual funds have also been allowed to open offshore funds to invest in equities abroad uti has also been brought within the regulatory framework of sebi so we find that sebi after the capital market reforms not only did private mutual funds come up but also uti was brought under the ambit of the framework of sebi next we have the opening up to the foreign capital a significant reform this is that the indian capital market had opened up for foreign institutional investors so foreign institutional investors can now buy shares and debentures of the private indian companies in the indian stock market and they can also invest in the government securities this has been done to attract foreign capital and foreign institutional investors have been permitted full capital convertibility another very important thing was access to international capital markets all these things we noticed only after 1991 the indian corporate sector had been allowed to raise funds in the international capital markets through adrs or the american depository receipts gdr the global depository receipts fccb foreign currency convertibility bonds and ecb external commercial borrowings similarly the overseas corporate bodies the ocb and the non resident indians have been allowed to invest in the equity capital market of the indian companies so here we find both ways the indian corporate sectors were allowed to raise funds of the international capital market while the non resident indians and the overseas capital bodies corporate bodies were allowed to invest in the equity capital market of the indian companies so the foreign institutional investors have been allowed to invest in equities of the private corporate indian companies as well as in the government securities other things that really took place during this period of time was the change in trading and settlement procedure early trading on a stock exchange used to take place on the floor of the stock exchange where prices were shouted out and shares were sold to the highest bidder however nowadays we know that this is not done trading is drawn 
electronically in the broker's office through a computer terminal which is connected to the main computer system of the stock exchange. Any member can log in to the site, feed the information about the shares he wants to buy or sell and the price into the computer. Accordingly, the transaction is executed by matching the orders at the best bid and offer price. We now come to the introduction of the depository. The Depository Act was passed in 1996. It was formed for the purpose of ensuring free transferability of securities with speed, accuracy and security. Earlier, the securities and shares were traded in the form of physical certificates, which had problems like settlement delays, theft, forgery, etc. Keeping these weaknesses associated with the transfer of a share in physical form, SEBI developed a new system by which all trading in shares were done in electronic form. So, depository is an institution or organization which hold the securities, example the shares, the debentures, the bonds, the mutual funds, etc. in electronic form in which the trading is done. So, depository is an institution or organization which hold these securities. It is a technology-driven electronic storage system. It has no paperwork relating to share certificates, transfer forms, etc. In India, there are two types of depository. One is NSDL, the National Securities Depositories Limited, and the other is a CDSL, that is a Central Depository Service Limited. And thirdly, we talk about now the dematerialization of securities. Dematerialization is the process by which the physical form of the securities is converted into the electronic form. So when shares are converted into electronic forms, they are then held in a type of account which we call the DMAT account. Next, we have the bank and the capital markets. Another important to strengthen, another important step to strengthen the Indian capital market is that banks have been allowed to lend against the various capital market instruments such as the corporate shares and the debentures to individuals, investment companies, trusts and endowment shares and stock brokers, industrial and corporate buyers and SEBI approved market makers. And lending by banks against various capital market instruments to individuals, shares and stock brokers, market makers is made in accordance with certain norms regarding purpose, capital adequacy, transparent transactions, maximum possible amount or ceiling or duration of the loan. Establishment of creditors rating agencies. Three creditors rating agencies are there, namely the CRISIL that was established in 1988, the Credit Rating Information Services of India Limited, then we have the 1991 established ICRA, the Investment Information and Credit Rating Agency of India Limited, and then we have CARE, the Credit Analysis and Research Limited. These were all set up in order to assess the financial health of different financial institutions and agencies related to stock market activities. It is a guide for the investors also in evaluating the risk of their investors. There has been an increase in the merchant banking activities after the capital market reforms were in place. Many Indian and foreign commercial banks have set up their merchant banking divisions in the last few years. These divisions provide financial services such as underwriting facilities, issue organizing, consultancy services, etc. It has proved as a helping hand to factors related to the capital market. And also in terms of investors protection, under the purview of the SEBI, the central government of India has also set up the Investors Education and Protection Fund called IEPF in 2001. It works in educating and guiding the investors. It tries to protect the interest of the small investors from frauds and malpractices in the capital market. And then we have a, a growth 
in the derivative transactions. From June 2000, the NSE had introduced the derivative trading in equities. In November 2001, it has also introduced a future and option transactions. These innovative products have given variety for the investment lending to the expansion of the capital market. We also had the insurance sector reforms coming up after 1991. Indian insurance sector also witnessed massive reforms. The Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority was set up in 2000. It paved the entry of private insurance companies to India. As many insurance companies invest their money in the capital market, it also started expanding. And then we also had commodity trading. Along with the trading of ordinary securities, the trading in commodity was also encouraged. The multi-commodity exchange, MCX, was set up. The volume of such transactions is growing at a splendid rate. So, in conclusion, we can say that with digitalization and the use of technology, the Indian capital market is considered to be the most advanced. Capital markets could ensure seamless service to investors during the entire COVID period. The growth of the capital market is visible from the participation by new age investors, the growing DMAT accounts and also the SIP inflow in the mutual funds. It was retail participation that really helped the Indian capital market absorb the selling of selling by the foreign institutional investors. And we can say that India has really outperformed the global markets. We can say that the reform process in the Indian capital market is bound to continue. And we'll see many new initiatives in the coming years, like the T plus one settlement, efficient management of client money, cyber security framework, tighter insider trading regulations. We will see in the coming years that India is going to become a financial hub for Southeast Asia. Reforms are also required for IPO to see transparent pricing. Also, a lot of integration among different regulators will help the implementation of reforms effectively. And all these reforms is going to really attract the foreign institutional investors to make India preferred investment destination. And of course, in the coming years, we are also going to see a slew of new products that are going to flood the Indian financial or capital market. Basically, reforms is a continuing process and it will have to match the growth of the capital market in India. India has a long way to go to convert savings into investment and participation. So with positive economic indicators, we really feel India will be a developed economy with a vibrant capital market by the time we celebrate our 100 years of independence.